Hello hackers! Welcome to another video in the advanced exploitation module of Pwn College. Today we're going to be talking about primitives, exploitation primitives to be specific. Um, in the context of our motivating example that we've been um, uh, rolling with this whole video series, right? Um, this rolling, uh, this example has um, uh, heap operations that would appear to be safe in a single threaded scenario, but in a multi-threaded scenario, they are not safe. And we have already um, used a uh, race between um, printf and free to leak, for example, the thread specific um, arena address, specifically the tcache per thread leak, excuse me, in the last video. Um, in this video, we're going to push further. So um, we've leaked the, the um, address uh, of the per thread struct. And hold on, let me fix the layout of this slide real quick. There we go. All right. Um, so we leaked out the uh, per thread uh, struct that every freed um, allocation that gets placed in the tcache um, gets written into the second keyword, right? Um, using that and looking in GDB, we looked at where a uh, pointer to libc is. So we use the fact that we know where the uh, per thread um, tcache struct is to look up where there's a pointer to libc, specifically in the arena metadata, um, to get a, a um, in the arena metadata of the cache of the thread arena, which is immediately before the per thread struct, there is an address to libc. So we know the address of a libc address, right? So what's next? All right. Um, in order to really reason about what's next, we need an end goal, right? And end goal, um, let's arbitrarily, um, of course, it'll all become clearer then, but let's say, uh, of course, we want to get the flag. There is no um, convenient win function uh, that will give us the flag, uh, or putting in other ways, we can't subtly corrupt the logic of this program to give us the flag to achieve our goals. So um, we want to hijack the program completely. Um, we do this uh, because there is no, uh, because all the mitigations are on, um, the stack is non executable, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Our remaining um, path forward is to use to uh, use a ROP chain to take over the program and um, piece together gadgets to leak the flag. Alright, so in order to do that, we need to, or it really helps to know where libc is. Um, so let's say our immediate next step is to figure out where the address of libc, where libc is loaded in memory in the process. Luckily, as I said, we know the address of an address of libc. In the uh, arena metadata, there's a pointer back to the main arena in libc. Awesome. So to um, exploit this, we're going to, or to, 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 get closer to leaking the flag, we're now going to, in this lecture, talk about what we're going to call an arbitrary read primitive that we will use to figure out where libc is. All right, so what's a primitive? Um, a uh, primitive is, an exploitation primitive is a word that basically means a reusable capability that an attacker can use through often by combining a bunch of uh, vulnerabilities and often complex ways by combining a bunch of program um, um, logic, misusing it, et cetera, et cetera, to achieve a simple goal. Um, primitives come in all shapes and sizes, but the common ones are an arbitrary read primitive, right? So if you have an arbitrary read primitive that is a reusable um, uh, capability that will allow you as an attacker to disclose memory at an arbitrary address. Arbitrary write primitive, sometimes known as a write what where, will allow you as an attacker to write some controlled piece of data to some uh, controlled address. An arbitrary call privilege, imagine if you as an attacker overwrote a function pointer and that was later called, will allow you to call arbitrary 
um, functions. Um, there are all sorts of, of, of different primitives. You might have a write zero wherever you want primitive, for example, right? But the, the kind of holy grail is arbitrary read, arbitrary write, arbitrary call or jump. Um, there are also relative alternatives. Sometimes you're not lucky enough to overwrite a pointer. You are, um, however, lucky enough to overwrite a offset or you can control a size or something on these lines. Um, and in these relative alternatives to the um, uh, these various primitives, the attacker uh, can control some value that's added to a pointer. That is also very powerful, but obviously not as powerful as being able to control a pointer completely. And and these exploit primitives, I keep saying reusable, right? They they are used as building blocks of exploits. And an exploit with these. Uh, um, when using these uh, primitives becomes kind of like a, a program in itself. It's no longer just, you know, read this, write that, read it or, or whatever, right? Uh, send, uh, read until, send, read until in pwn tools. Yeah, now you're calling functions, arbitrary underscore read with uh, arguments and so forth. It, it's kind of becomes a um, software development sort of life. Um, but this is how complex exploits are made. You achieve this primitive and then you encapsulate it in a function so you can call uh, in your exploit script so you can call that function so that you can reason about your exploit easier. All right, so let's talk about arbitrary read specifically and specifically in the context of this application. Um, of course, this application, as we saw because of race conditions, um, uses the heap unsafely. Single threaded, it'll be safe heap wise. Multi-threaded, suddenly we have problems. So of course, you have done um, heap uh, exploitation in the dynamic allocator misuse module and you did a lot of tcache poisoning and you can apply that here. So imagine um, tcache, po a tcache poisoning attack, you uh, use malloc, free, scanf, malloc, malloc. Oh, I missed a free here actually. Well, let me fix that real quick so you're not confused, one second. No, wait, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't. So you actually, let's run through this in detail. Basically by abusing the, the Tcash, we'll be able to uh, force an allocation that we control. And then of course we can, uh, using the printf um, functionality in the, the program, we can read out uh, data at that address. All right, let's see how this will look in our um, the, the, the context of this program, which is a message server, right? So uh, we allocate two messages, message A, message B, message one, message two. So it, we create a tcache and, um, or really a, an allocated chunk A and B, and then we free both of them, right? And that um, first puts uh, entry B in the tcache. Let's actually rewind when we free entry B um, puts entry B in the tcache, adds, uh, sets the count of that bin to one, um, and puts the address of the per thread struct into the second uh, eight bytes of that allocation. This is what we leaked out, by the way, uh, in the last video. And then sets the next pointer to null because uh, it is the only thing in that tcache bin. When we free A, uh, which was stored in message one, um, we actually insert that into the head of the list. So uh, the first entry points to A and then A points to B, okay? And then of course, we want to scan F um, into A, into our message one, an arbitrary address that will then make the Tcash conception look like this, right? At this arbitrary address, there's some data uh, in this example is B and C that is stored that we want to read. Um, we have our, um, uh, we overwrote the next pointer of A with address to that. And so now the linked list has kind of been hijacked. And then of course we malloc twice. When we malloc once, we receive A back and the um, injected address actually gets put into the head of the list. When we malloc again, the injected address gets returned to us um, but unfortunately the, um, 
second eight bytes of that address get is nulled out. When you allocate something, it nulls out this per thread. Uh, when you allocate a previously free tcache entry, it will null out those second eight bytes as we observed in the heap allocation module. So this so far is all baby heap. It's the, the heap, uh, the dynamic allocator misuse module that we have come to know and love. Um, so where is the arbitrary read? Of course, with this printf, we can uh, print out the resulting, um, uh, um, um, the data at the address that we want to get, and that is our arbitrary read. We chose an arbitrary address, and we can read eight bytes from it. All right. What's the problem? Of course, the problem is that the server is careful. When it frees a message, it'll set it as not currently stored, and then it will refuse to actually scan f into that message if it is not stored. Instead, it'll just scan f into a, a buffer that's not used anymore in that loop. All right. So on the face of it, we're screwed, but that's not the case, again, because of race conditions. So we're going to race the allocation. No, sorry. We're going to race um, the scan f against the free, right? And what we are hoping to accomplish is that when we um, try to free, actually, I just realized I can show you this much better. So let me do that. All right, that's much better. So we can actually race using the free action, which frees the message and then sets the stored uh, bit to zero. And the scanf, which checks the stored bit and if it is set, if it is uh, uh, one, actually writes into the message using, by racing these two, these, uh, these two actions um, and getting the scan app to run in between the free and the um, uh, unsetting of the stored byte, then uh, we can actually get a scan app to override that address before we are no longer allowed to, right? So let's do that. Um, actually, let me, let's do that first and then we'll go and um, look at some gotchas. All right, so um, this is our um, program from last time, right from the last video where we were leaking the per thread struct by racing um, the uh, free and the printf. And now we're going to get a read. So we uh, leaked the per thread struct as a reminder um, we actually um, also computed the address where there was a libc pointer. So let's print that out as well. All right. So now we have a the address of a, a pointer into the main arena in libc, which is in libc. Awesome. So let's uh, get an arbitrary read, read primitive. Um, and we're just going to call this function arbitrary read, right? Um, we're going to, of course, similar to our, um, the, the leaking of the per thread, we're going to pass it two connections that it will use to um, do the race and basically the address that we want to um, leak, right? Awesome. All right. So uh other than that we're going to do exactly our uh prior game plan right let's um uh before we get started let's let's clean out the pipes just in case um there's uh something waiting there and it'll screw us up when we try to uh read the value oops um okay um let's of course, pack the address that we want to read. Let's make this adder. I'm to save time. I'm copy pasting off of a script I wrote, um, so that um, you don't have to wait for me to type. But actually, let's 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 not do that. All right. So um, as we saw, we're going to have to allocate uh, two allocations. We did a malloc one, malloc two, so that we have um, we end up when we free them with that um, awesome 
um, you know, linked list that we can override the next address of the first entry of. Um, we're going to free the second one and then we'll free the first one. And of course, I'm just going by our game plan right here, right? This is the game plan we're gonna have. And actually, let's, let's, there. So this is what we'll end up with. We're gonna get two allocations. We'll free two, uh, two. we wanna raise this second free against the scan F and go from there. All right, so let's uh, get back to the terminal. All right, so we have one allocation, uh, malloc one, malloc two, free two. Then we're gonna keep trying to race. So the race isn't gonna be uh, extremely likely to succeed. We're trying to get right before, right between the free and the store. This is uh, not a lot of instructions to, uh, uh, to get um, uh, in which the, um, the free thread can get descheduled, our, our uh, print, our scanf thread can get run and so forth. So we're going to have to run multiple times. And of course, simultaneously by using this insane forking of the Python processor, we're going to send both the uh, free and of course that, that, that uh, second one. Um, and we actually want to send a lot of this because we want to uh, have it trying freeing over and over. And then uh, our scanf needs to hit that first free. Um, and uh, um, actually, so I guess this doesn't, the other freeze won't do anything. Will it? Only the first free matters. So let's do that. So we send a free here. We'll kill the that same process. All right. And then in a, our main uh, thread or our main process, we will send a bunch of scanfs because we want to do scanf, 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 and then that free that that will hit will hit in one of the um, uh, while uh, one thread will do the free while the other thread is doing all these scanfs. We'll have a race, and as we saw on. Uh, this slide will be home free. All right. So um, send scanf, and we want to put in the index. Uh, the index. You know the index. We want to scan f one, and we want to put in our packed address and a new line times two thousand. All right. So you hit that. Let's do wait here. Um, now, of course, let's let's give uh, everything some time to uh, actually, you know, process all of these scanfs, and then we check to make sure that um, the attack worked. So what we're going to do is. Um, we're going to malloc that uh, guy that we hopefully just overrode the next point, or we'll malloc an allocation to receive chunk A. Hopefully we have just re, uh, overwritten the next pointer of chunk A. Um, we'll print F chunk A. And then we'll just re retrieve the message. Um, up to the new line. And we'll confirm, I'll copy paste this because it's annoying to type. We'll confirm that um, the next address, which Tcash doesn't clear out, um, is uh, when, when, when uh, the chunk gets returned to us, we'll confirm that the next address is properly set. If it's properly set, we're done, right? And then we can break. If it's not properly set, then we didn't win the race. We're going to free one again. We just malloced it, so that's perfectly fine. And and try again with our scanf. All right. So this the nice thing is this race is very safe. Um, it's uh, it 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 will not kill our process if we lose, which is great. Okay. So when we're done here, we're going to uh, malloc our second uh, chunk B. All right. And we are going to 
wait for that to actually happen. I use dot clean here. I could also use um, time dot sleep. Dot clean sleeps a tiny bit, and that's all we really need to get one um, allocation done. Um, and we're going to send the printf. Um, and um, read it out using the same code. Awesome. Uh, let me just paste this code and we're going to um, unpack it. We'll get eight bytes, unpack it and return that. Okay, so now we have a function and this function will do an arbitrary read and we can run it over and over. All right, let's do this arbitrary read. Um, so we want the main arena address. Let's get it. We will um, arbitrary read R1, R2, main arena pointer address. So we send in the, the address of the pointer to the main arena and we will get back a leaked main arena address. And if this works on the first try, that'll be insane, but it likely won't. All right, so instead of send line, I just send file, that's weird. Let's kill that process. Actually here, let's do this. We're going to try to kill that process before we start it up. Awesome, okay. Um, where's that send line? You didn't warn me. None of you warned me. I was hoping you'd catch it. No, just kidding. Um, oh, send file. Awesome. Okay, we're trying the race. It's taking longer than expected. Sometimes it takes longer than expected, but could also uh, be a sign that it's uh, not going to work. Fascinating. Oh, wait. What, what was it? It was sitting on... Re I did read line instead of send line. No, 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 this is right. Oh, no, 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 no. This is all good. No, it's not here. This should be send line. Whew, okay. At least we saw something that was obviously wrong. not winning the race they're not winning the race um oh i didn't send a new line here this should be send line so it never actually started processing it let's try that boom we make a correct script we win the race so we won the race we did our amazing printf and now we have leaked a pointer into the main arena which is inside libc all right, let's get to some gotchas and then we'll look at the implications. Um, some gotchas. Uh, one is um, we have um, brain dump. One is that uh, we have now corrupted the heap metadata alongside leaking out that address of libc. Um, we have also set the address of libc as the next entry in the tcache struct, right? That means if count was not zero, then the next malloc would try to return this entry and then also zero out the second eight bytes of it to try to null out the uh, beyond. And then take the first eight bytes and overwrite 
the entry with it. And then the next malloc would return those and so on, right? So we've hijacked that linked list and we uh, need to understand it as implications. Um, luckily, in this case, the count is zero. So future allocations will just be uh, created as fresh chunks and given to us, but that's we're not always so lucky. Um, one thing that you can rely on in a um, situation where there's multiple threads and there's a race condition and you can uh, create new threads like we can create here by uh, 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 creating a new connection. Um, each thread has its own cache, tcache metadata. Tcache means thread cache. It's per thread, like this per thread struct implies. So if you just disconnect from one connection and you connect from another one, you have a new tcache um, and, and you're good to go. You don't even have to disconnect from the old one, just connect from the new one. And in fact, both uh, of the connections we were using actually had their own tcache. If you'll notice, I was being careful to all do all the allocations on uh, um, the first connection, R1. All right. The other um, problem is that our message is now pointing to somewhere inside libc, right? So we allocated uh, a controlled address that we're going to read stuff out of, right? So. Um, or rather, our, our, our uh, message is now pointing uh, to the per thread struct. The per thread struct doesn't look like a chunk, right? If Or, sorry, it's not pointing to the per thread struct. It is pointing before the per thread struct to where the arena metadata that had libc. And that doesn't look like a chunk. Specifically, it doesn't have the right metadata. And so uh, when that metadata, um, when if you try to free it, the whole program will crash because uh, libc will panic that what it is trying to free is not a valid chunk. It'll look at that size and it'll freak out and it'll abort the program. Um, the solution is uh, don't do that. Don't repeat it because uh, uh, you don't need to in this case. There are many, many message indexes, right? So let me actually show you. Um, uh, if I try to leak out something else, so let's say I leaked out the, the arena and I want to uh, leak out something um, actually at, I leaked out a Lipsy address. I want to leak out whatever is, was there. Oops, I just... I didn't even leak it out. That was a weird brain dump. Okay. Instead of main arena pointer address, just main arena address. Uh, our earlier, okay, there. Sometimes the races don't work and it, it'd be crashed. Okay. Here we go. I was trying, as you can see, to uh, print out the main arena address. Um, and when I sent the uh, malloc one printf one here, um, it actually, actually when I sent the free one, that's when shit really hit the fan. Um, but when uh, it noticed when sending this, that um, the pipe program was dead, the pipe was closed, and there's an end of file error. If I read what the program wrote to me, it says free invalid pointer. Um, let's run this in GDB. Okay. Um, the per thread struct failed. Hold on, run this in GDB. Okay, we leaked the thing. We leaked the main arena and now we're gonna try to leak. Ah, and here we go. We got that SIG abort. Let's go up, 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 free and valid pointer. Go up. I compiled this with debug symbols so I could show you this. Um, we are freeing messages index. Messages index is our per thread, first of all, 
uh, index is one is two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Two index is two. Um, that is the index that we. Uh, ah, so it died here actually even. Um, so two is 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 the allocation that is controlled, right? And that is what we pointed at the um, main arena pointer our, on our thread sta uh, heap. Um, that's where it's pointing. When we try to free this, of course, the address here is, is an address, as we discussed, this is the address we leaked into the main arena when we did printf. And that's, in fact, what we leaked. Um, but if we look at the metadata, the size metadata of this chunk, which is stored eight bytes back, it's zero. That is not a valid size. When we try to free it, libc freaks out. That is not good, right? Um, so we need to make primitives, ideally, if you can, repeatable. Again, good software practice means that if we call a function once, you should be able to call it uh, again, unless you know something obvious has changed. So as uh, um, we see from this slide, of course, we burned the bridge. Messages 2 specifically is pointing to some random stuff. This is a bug on the slide. Let me actually fix it so no one's confused. All right. So messages 2 is now pointing to some garbage data, or not garbage data. It's pointing to in, into libc, which is great. Um, but it's pointing to something that doesn't look like a heap chunk. Um, so we can actually change our arbitrary read primitive to use different messages as time goes on. So let's update that. Um, this is easy to do. Let's just keep track of what index it's currently on. And we'll just put in some format strings to make sure we allocate and free the right indexes. Um, this should be a format string. Okay, here, this should be the index. We can't have byte format strings, unfortunately, so we have to do it that way. All right, here is the index. And here is index plus one. In the end, index plus one is burned, whereas in we can't repoint it somewhere else. So now we're just going to increment it by two. Let's declare this as a global just for um, so that Python knows to use the global index versus some local um, uh, variable. All right. And this, every time you run arbitrary read, it'll now use a different set of indexes. So now we can read memory to our heart's content. What's going on? Oh, GDB is hogging things up. Let's disable GDB here. All right. Oops, the leak failed. So we might have just, uh, we might have left the bug. Leak failed twice in a row. Per thread struck leak failed three times. Leak failed. Okay, there's a bug somewhere. Oh, yeah, because we forgot to make these F strings. Anything else we forgot to do make F strings? I don't think so. Let's give that a try. Okay, leak succeeded. The second leak is not failing yet. It's taking a long time though. Of 
what's happening. I was trying. Still trying. What's going on? Be free. Scan F properly. Let's restart IPython. Oh! Awesome. So that leaked properly, or I mean, it returned. I'll show you that the zero is actually correct. There must have been something stuck up with Python, um, probably because of the way that we were just YOLO forking to uh, <laughs> run background tasks. All right, so this works. Our arbitrary primitive works uh, multiple times. Let's grab a GDB and actually explore to, so I can convince you. All right, here we go. Test zero. Ah, shit. And then I killed it. Let me restart that. Okay, leaked test zero. All right, kill that. Um, here are the messages. Here's the address of Arena, and you can see now we have message one and two. This is what was used to leak uh, uh, the main Arena pointer from here. And then message three and four. And in message four, we have um, the uh, address that this is what we leaked this value. Um, and oops, here is main arena. And what is there is a zero. All right. So this is the arbitrary read primitive. We did it. Um, We're going to uh, pause here. Um, actually, I'll mention uh, one thing, and then I will um, do the rest in the in the putting it all together video that's coming up next. One thing I'll mention is we can go actually beyond the arbitrary read. We can do the same, almost the same thing, but instead of a scanf, we do a or instead of a printf, we do a scanf, and suddenly we have an arbitrary write. Right. So it's not so rare because of the complexity of a lot of these primitives. Um, this primitive. Is, is a tricky race condition combined with a tricky um, heap uh, attack, it is definitely not rare to um, have slight tweaks on these primitives that can accomplish multiple things. So here, instead of an arbitrary read, instead of a printf, we do a scanf, suddenly we overwrite the controlled allocation. Of course, that gives us an arbitrary write. Let's take a very quick look. Um, so we're just gonna copy this. And we can actually paste it. And we can say arbitrary write. All of this remains the same except for this printf becomes a scanf. And what we want, we can no longer use this. We need to use something like this. because we need the byte string. We need to pack um, the w w value that we want to write. We can put the value here. And this is arbitrary write. And now we can do a, let's do a test. We'll write 414, sorry. We'll do 4141 to the main arena address in libc. Uh, a, -A, -A, -A -C, 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 c All right, hit enter. Arbitrary write takes three positional parameters, but four given. Obviously that is not what we want. Oops. What did I uh, update? Oops, I put it. This should be arbitrary read, so my bad. Okay. All right, test and we're racing, we're racing. What's 
かな Oh, yeah, that's not quite so easy. We forgot, okay, an arbitrary read. We were uh, reading until the message. We don't do any of that. None of that matters, right? We just uh, return. We did, uh, do our scan app. There's nothing to read, okay? Hit enter. Boom, it's done. We did our, our read, so let's... Uh, we did our write, our arbitrary write. Look at the messages. Awesome, here's a message. Ah, so here is when we leaked out the main arena pointer. Here's when we leaked out the test value of the main arena, which was zero. And here is when we wrote to the main arena. And why is it not written? Seriously, why isn't it not written? Ah, because this should be not index, but index plus one. Oops, we wrote to the wrong message we wrote here. That's not good. All right, let's try that again. We fix that up. Okay, test done, boom, kill that. Here are our messages, get right to the point. Boom, we were overwritten part of libc with 4141414143434343, arbitrary write. All right, one thing that I will say is um, that was not good software engineering practices. Ah, let me fix the layout of the slide real quick. That was not good software engineering practices. Um, there's a ton of repeated code that exists right now, as I just showed you, between arbitrary read and arbitrary write. All of this crazy race condition stuff. Actually, the difference between read and write is just that printf versus the scanf. So, try to reuse and encapsulate in your exploits as much as possible when they're complex, right? There are cases when that's uh, not what you want to do if there's very subtle differences that you need to make between the read case and the write case. But in our exploit, we should have a controlled allocation function that makes the allocation at a controlled address and then we either printf or, or, or scanf uh, based on w whether we want a read or a write. Software development and exploit development is important. Uh, from personal experience, for very complex exploits, I have had test cases because you want to catch things going wrong, similar to software development, as fast as possible. So let me um, show you the right way of doing this. So we have these kind of two big um, arbitrary read and an arbitrary write function. Let's stop it right here. This is where we malloc the controlled allocation. Um, and then let's just return, we'll do our, our index, because uh, the index really matters for this guy. Um, and then here we will arbitrary read our one, our two adder. So this becomes controlled allocation. All right. And this becomes arbitrary read. So. We, uh, we do the controlled allocation. Now, after this, we have a, a, a malloc um, message at a controlled location. Now we can print the message and, and everything is good. This now becomes index minus one because index was incremented. So we're actually looking at the last index and we're good to go. Same thing here, just for that scanf becomes index minus one. And instead we do controlled allocation R1, R2 adder. Much better uh, software engineering practices. Let's make sure that they fly, run it, go back here. Okay, first leak works, the test leak works. The um, write didn't crash. 
Let's look at the messages. Looks well set up to me. And over uh, right is working. All right. That's how you make good software. So what primitives do you need? Um, typically, if you have an arbitrary read and an arbitrary write, you win, right? Um, you need a, one piece of information to get you started usually, and that is a valid pointer at which you can start reading. We use that by leaking the TCache metadata. If you had an arbitrary read or an arbitrary write, but we didn't have that TCache leak, we would still be in trouble because we wouldn't know where to start reading. But because we started reading somewhere, um, we uh, were able to, uh, uh, you know, just now write arbitrary data into libc. At that point, generally, you are done. All right, so we're gonna end the video here. In the next video, we're gonna put together everything that we just did into the flag. See you there.